being very open, being able to kind of listen and have have this exchange with your card is really good. So if somebody's just like, ha 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 ha, ha it's like raise these things for me, you're like, okay, well you need to spend a lot of time with this deck. And I'll let you know when you're ready. Because what you need to do is just be be able to, to think about yourself, think about what you're doing, kind of just calm your mind, right? And then as you pull cards, it'll be a lot more meaningful because you'll be in the right frame of mind to, to see things. Not only you, but also the person that you're reading for. Okay, so if you had the chance to shuffle and you fold your three cards, I'd like okay, you to take hold your them. We're going to do the, the quick version of those things that we tried before. First, I'd like you to look at all three for the literal stuff. And I'll just say things in the background so you can look. Looking at all three, but who this person is, how they feel. What they're doing. What do I got going on? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> oh. You should have to look at my card three oh. times. Better. That actually makes sense. You're looking for what they're wearing. Do they look no, no. static? Do they look like they're wearing I can feel it. But I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know what it is either. Tired? Are you looking for their environment? Oh Are there any God. passageways? Are there any destinations? They're all upside down. They're all inverted. Oh, no. Mine are upside down too. Are they struggling? Are they comfortable? Are they comfortable? The upside down tower is a good thing. Well, three isn't cards, it? Beta. I think. And you're looking for Put anything them around them. Do they look like they can engage with the stuff that they that like the tools that are around them? The so are they gripping something fiercely? Are they relaxed? Is there something at their feet or something above their head? looking for anything around them. Is something bigger than them, grander than them, watching them. Controlling them. Yeah, that them. makes sense. That actually makes a lot then, of sense. And as you're looking through that, where are the metaphors? Do you see it? Are things going to go? Are things happening with grace? What are some of the hidden ideas when you're thinking about, like, what is what is another um, term for um, you know, uh, going on a journey? They look like they're going on a journey, for example. Yeah, I want to see what the deck says. Or if everything around them is lush and beautiful and green. Don't piss with my car. They're pouring water onto the ground, are they nourishing? Find the metaphors. You can find the signs and the symbols. Um, if you, some of my art people who had to take art history, you're going to see things in here that are very old, very old symbols and stuff. So again, you see things like the moon is intuition, you know, um, kind of the hidden realm, the dream state, you know, the subconscious. You know. You'll see colors that mean different things. Red for fierce and passionate and powerful. And then finally, do you remember what you looked at for a second and third in each one? as if they 
are three different people relating to one another. Who's looking at who? Or who's walking away from who? Okay? Are they resisting each other? Are they actually staring into the next part? Are they focused on themselves? What are they doing? Sometimes the direction of how the person is sitting or acting in the card can tell you a little bit about the relationship between those two concepts of those cards and body. If you're looking at it as a transition from left to right, for example, then look at how those characters move through those three spaces. If it is a comic, what does the first person do to transition to the second image? And what does the second person do to transition to the third image? So you're trying to fill in the gaps between the spaces. How do those things relate? There are a couple cards in here that are a little tricky, like the Wheel of Fortune. If you have like a, a wheel, you're like, mm. okay, that one's hard uh, because you're not a person. But you can imagine it as a as a cyclical wheel, almost like one of those, um, what, what is that? Yeah, like the wheel of fortune. I can't tell what yes. they are. But if you think about it as a, the picture as a she clock, drew. Right? Oh, the picture she drew. Cool. Clock, that's a little bit easier wow. of, uh, <laughs> concept for that one. The way that time time goes. So it's cycles. Cycles. So it always comes back around. So even if it is a wheel. Yes, how it moves, how it cycles, how it goes back around. It never, the wheel doesn't go like this, but the wheel turns. So. About how, how do you move through all three spaces? Look at the, the shift of the mood in each card. Does it get brighter? Does it get dimmer? Does it get more tortured? You know, if you're thinking about this transition. So, what we didn't do, um, which we'll actually do at the end of the, the class, is we didn't overlay this with a specific concept. What I'm trying to do is just by letting us look at these three cards together is realize that there is actually a story. So if you have three cards, if you have five cards, if you have 20 cards, there is actually a linear conversation. If you were to describe them, the way that you lay them down helps you see the relationship between how those actors in your card are relating to things above, to the side, beneath them, you know? If you're thinking about it as a comic, you will see the transitions between these cards, and it'll be helpful for you to kind of move through them that way. So some people that are mystified by putting down 10 card readings, and you're like, how can I possibly remember what this is like? Just think about it just like that. You put the first one down, how does that move to the second? How does the second move to the third? And, and what are the characters doing between those frames? And it helps a little bit to try and describe how they relate to each other. The last thing that you're looking for is you're looking for similarities in disparate concepts. So what I mean by that is there are patterns that we will pick up when we're looking at combos and stuff. So it's kind of like, um, just in general, you will notice if I'm up here and I say like a lot, yeah, I love that. I'm not gonna try not to do that anymore. But you'll so notice, if you're, if you're perceptive, you'll start to see, hey, there are two moves, there are three moves. There are people that look like they're in control in two of these cards. Mm -hmm. um, the more cards you have, the easier it is for you to pick up. Everybody's wearing something opulent. Yeah, it could be visuals too, like you'll see multiple cups or multiple swords. You might also see the infinity um, sign. Yeah, the yep, the infinity sign. Or angels, you know, or areas that are um, illuminated. Flowers. Flowers, yeah. Um, you'll Am see these different things. Time. And of course, when we use the whole deck, You'll see a lot of that. And so you're going to be looking for those patterns and similarities across the card. If you'd like to, you can pull a torch card. Mm -hmm. And again, it changes the dynamics slightly, but it also gives you more content to kind of play across. So you're looking for those patterns. Are there stars in a couple of them? Are the figures interacting with something else in a couple of them? Does it look like a partnership in some of them? Or is everybody alone? You'll, you'll be noticing like, all those different things. So again, making the patterns between them helps you be able to read confidently because you're actually not making it up. You're looking at it. You can see them. You can see the patterns and the things that you hold. So that's the last thing we're dealing with all these together, just by staring at the images that you have. Gum. I need some time. We'll take the cards. No problem. What we're gonna do is give you a couple.
minutes. Um, after this part of the exercise, we're going to take a, a quick break. So if you want more coffee, if you want to stand up for a second, or if you need to use the restroom. Um, and then we're going to go into the story of the pool and actually get down to some of the book stuff to give you more context for some of these things. Feel free, if you like to the cards, you can more to see if you can find that. Or if you want help from me or Jenny, pull us over and we'll, we'll help you find it if you're struggling and you're like, where is it? I can't see it. Do you want to get some tea now? Similar. No, I look for things that people are doing. Are they all holding something? I mean, like,